so we've made our way back out here to I-75 southbound, uh, going away from the, the 75 Chrome Shop, and I persuaded a gentleman here with this lovely, lovely uh, KW cab over to come out and burn some fuel. Who are we talking to right here? Tony Shaggy, but my, my name's Chris Seeger from Hanover Township, PA. So uh, tell me about that truck you got there. This old girl here is a, a 1982 Kenworth K100 C model. Got a B model Cat 13 speed with uh, 411 rears. Uh, she got about 4.5 million miles on her. I tell you what, uh, sounds like there's a little bit of history involved in that truck there. Uh, why don't you tell us uh, you know, how long you've owned it for and, and some of the other details when you got your hands on it. So it, it was a barn find. Uh, me and a friend of mine went up there to upstate New York to Belmont. Uh, he was up there after another truck that the guy had, and uh, it took a good bit to get the truck from the, go the old man. He, he didn't want to part ways with it. Uh, like he said, young man, I have no reason to get rid of it. No old girl doesn't owe me anything. Uh, but finally convinced him to get rid of it a couple, a couple years back, and then uh, drug it home, and uh, well, I mean, here she sits. We cleaned her up and uh, did a lot of work to it. Worked some, you know, had some light issues, uh, no electrical problems, but uh, what she's what you got, you know, we put new tires, new rims, brakes, uh, wire brush, and cleaned down the frame and painted it ourselves. Uh, we, we, you know, I work it every week, uh, Pennsylvania, all over the place. As a matter of fact, I'll be leaving here tomorrow, and heading out west coast with it, and then coming on back, so. Uh, uh, she ain't much, but she's mine, and I uh, believe in keeping it old school. Well, I'll tell you what, that's uh, that's one heck of a barn find. And talk about nostalgia going down the road. You know, you just can't, you can't just help but just look at that truck and just daydream. At least I'm speaking for myself. I mean, that's, that's such a great, great, great truck, uh, and I'm glad you, you have it there. Uh, and I'm glad you, you got it on the road where uh, others can appreciate it as well. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, we had it for quite some time uh, before I revealed it to my mom. And uh, before we did that, uh, we wanted to get the back of the sleeper done. It's uh, not quite the way we wanted it done, but I mean, it's it's a little something in memory of my dad. Uh, I remember as far back as I can, uh, growing up in an old cab over. Shoot, when I was a kid, I was never allowed to sit in that passenger seat. My dad was afraid I'd, he'd hit a bounce and I'd fly out the window. And then he'd have to explain to my mom, come on over there. Um, but, you know, the, we got the sleeper done, got the truck all cleaned up a little bit and uh, reviewed it to my mom and uh, my dad passed away quite a few years ago. Uh, he had an old cab over like this, uh, spitting image of it. Uh, as surprising as it may be and it may sound, uh, the VIN numbers are off by one. This one's 296007, his was uh, 296006. Um, but yeah, I missed it by one VIN number. I wish she was here to do it, you know, take a look at it, see how far we've come along with the old girl. Uh, being one serial uh, number off there, one digit off in that serial number, uh, I think he, your dad would be more than proud uh, to know that you, you're running something that was more than likely near and dear to his heart in terms of trucks and everything. Uh, that's just amazing. So, uh, how many miles have you put on it since uh, you've uh, got it back running and got it back on the road? Almost 300,000. Okay, within that time, did you have to do anything to the engine? I don't want to say that out loud. I don't have real wood in here to knock on, if you know what I mean. Uh, starters, you know, uh, general maintenance, or we're a firm believer in preventable maintenance. Uh, keep up on the oil change, grease it every time it gets home, and even out on the road. Uh, keep up on the oil change and just keep after it. But I generally don't run her down the road too hard, so um, uh, she doesn't get beat up that bad, but we keep up on it. 10 4. Well, that sounds like uh, some sensible maintenance there. Uh, you mentioned that you don't uh, run it on the, on the road too hard. Uh, you know, what's a magic number for you when it comes to you know, getting down the road and uh, getting some good fuel economy with it? At 60 mile an hour. Uh, believe it or not, these, you know, the way it's set up, I uh, get about seven miles in a gallon if I keep it around 60 mile an hour or so. Well, that's pretty good with an all mechanical engine, isn't it? Yeah, it's almost unheard of, especially with an old cab over. So, tell us what brought you into wanting to be a truck driver. It's all I've ever known growing up. 
And uh, like I said, as, as, as far back as I can remember, I, uh, trucking's been in my family my whole entire life. Just going back in the days, you know, with my old man and uh, seeing how the trucking industry was, uh, yes, it, it has changed over the years, but uh, I'm a firm believer, along with some of the other drivers, a lot of the other drivers I heard, you know, we're keeping it old school. Uh, we're all there for one another, we're all family. A lot of people don't want to look at it that way, but it's, it, that's the way I look at it. From one driver to the next, we're all family, we're all out here, we all have to look out for one another. Yeah, you're right about that. And um, with that in mind, you, I got to chat with you a little bit before heading out here on the highway, and you mentioned that you and some of the other drivers uh, were helping each other out there at the chrome shop and stuff like that. So, you know, tell me about that. You know, what was going on there? So I got over here Thursday. I got up to the truck shop, you know, right, right up there to the chrome shop. And um, it's just like every other time out here on the road. I mean, it's, you know, I like to say get out here and, uh, you know, we get to a truck shop and relax a little bit. But uh, it ain't all about that. Um, you always find somebody that may need help, whether it be little or big or small. Um, I was talking to this old boy, was, uh, he parked in, pulled in there and parked next to me and he was like, you know, I saw that spot was open and I just had to take it next to you. I liked that old, that old cavalry out there and it was, uh, just so happened to me, he had an old 76A model and uh, we're, you know, we're just walking around looking at each other's trucks and uh, it just so happened he noticed that uh, bracket on my uh, passenger side front airbag was, was broke and uh, it must have just happened not long ago. But, um, and it just started from there, so, you know, we're ripping and tearing that apart, and I, I carry an extra airbag in my, my side box, and, uh, you know, I had to order the bracket for it, and had to deliver from Orlando up there to the chrome shop. Uh, so, you know, we, we fixed that, and a uh, good friend of mine, Harry, I met him, uh, he works for Double DK, and he pulled up next to me, and, uh, we were fixing some lights on his truck and just so happened to be uh, yeah, a little bit of a fuel issue. And, uh, you know, we fixed that and it just escalated from there. Uh, drivers coming over asking us if we, we would mind giving them a hand with this, that, or the other. And, uh, I don't mind helping anybody out. I know what it's like to be alongside the road or be somewhere and, and needing help. And I'm going to back out of it. We got a couple bears up there. Come on over there. Um, but, how are be? Yeah, uh, like I said, we we made a whole weekend ordeal out of it, helping each other and getting together and chewing the fat and you know meeting a lot of nice people. Um, that's what it's all about. It's probably something that you know doesn't happen all the time, maybe. And I think what and uh, it's what used to happen all the time. You know, guys would uh, you know, hang out and uh, on the back row there and have a good time and do exactly what you've said so when you're speaking earlier about you know everybody being family and everything else that way it's just good to see that you know it's, 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 it just I, I, I want to get I don't want to get too mushy but it kind of warms your heart it's just really cool to to know that guys can you know that they don't know each other they're they're trying to adhere the old trucking code of you know, uh, brotherhood and that they're doing that so that's just awesome like I said, as far back as I can remember being involved in trucks and my dad, um, you know, that's how it was back in the day. You know, everybody on their time off or even without their time off, um, you see somebody pulled over, there'd be a line of trucks pulled over to help somebody. Uh, they, you know, I, I try to keep it like that. If, if I can help you, if I have something and you need it, by all means, well, what's mine is yours out here. I'm a firm believer in that. Amen to that, brother. Amen to that. What's uh, the favorite, one of the favorite things that you love about that truck that you have there? My favorite thing with this truck is I, I, I kind of know it and I can turn wrenches and I don't need a computer to tell me what's wrong with it. I, I love this old iron. Um, I mean, this old girl is almost inseparable. She's very reliable for me. I respect this old girl. That's awesome. I don't know if you got a... a 
a view of that on the, the decal on the back of my on the back of my sleeper here is but you know it says memory of dad PA trucker. Now he used to go by PA trucker way, way, way back when when I was, you know, knee high to a grasshopper and uh, funny story behind that, my whole point of it is uh for many years as a kid growing up, I always thought my dad's name was PA because everybody that knew him, uh, even my sister, my mom and everybody would call him PA. Uh, but his real name was Ron, Ronnie, uh, not PA. <laughs> That's funny. That's pretty cool though. So you said that you had to, you know, kind of twist the, the previous owner's arm. So what, what, how did that go? You know, did you show up and say, hey, uh, you want to sell that? And he's like, oh, he thought on it? Or did you have to, you know, wait a couple of years for him to change his mind about it? Yeah, I call him a young man. He's, a, he's 85 years old. The gentleman's name is Donnie. Uh, he lives upstate New York. But I, I tell you what, what, that old man, you can, I could sit down and talk to him for, for days, months. Uh, I had, all day long, I'd sit there and talk to the old man. But yeah, you know, like I said, he uh, he had he had no really interest in, in selling this old girl. Uh, like he said, it, he uses it around the yard, moves his trailers around, and it doesn't really own anything. And he has no business selling it. Uh, his point of afterwards, you know, after I got convinced him to sell it, uh, his whole point and reasoning why he didn't want to sell it is he didn't want to see it just to go to somebody else that just trying to make a buck. Uh, if he was going to get rid of it, he wanted somebody that would appreciate that. And I send him pictures every now and then, from time to time, and, uh, you know, show him the progress that the truck has came, and you know, he appreciates that, and he respects that. And he was like, hey, you are lying there, young man. Um, I, there's a little story behind it I don't have to have with me, it's at home. Uh, but, however, with that being said, I told him, you know, give him what he wanted for the truck, uh, but it, I'd, I'd like the title and the pin off of his hat. And he said, son, young man, that pin's probably older than you are. He was like, but a deal's a deal, and here it is. Uh, you know, I still have it at home. Uh, but, yeah, nice guy, though. Really nice guy. So let me ask you, and if you don't mind sharing, you know, we all, when it comes down to brass tacks and everything, we try to get a... a we gotta get. We try to get a perspective on the market and what the market's doing, especially truck-wise. You know, a lot of people they, when this whole ELD thing, you know, start popping up. You know, people are wanting to, you know, buy a, uh, you know, a truck with a mechanical motor to not have to deal with the whole ELD situation. So, the question I want to ask is, uh, if you don't mind sharing, what'd you pay for the truck? Eleven thousand five hundred. I, I think you got a really, really good deal there. Yeah, that was quite quite some time ago now but yeah even um, the market then when i did get it the, you know the market was skyrocketing on this you know on this whole truck but yeah i feel i got a, a, a great deal so what else do you have in mind to do with it you know what can we expect to see going down the road i would love to get it painted one day uh, i still got the old paint coat here uh what color it's actually supposed to be and it's damn close to that i i know underneath the step you right around the step there underneath the doors is the original color, uh, the blue and gold and blue. Uh, but yeah, one day um, I'd, I'd absolutely love to get you know to get it painted, the original stripes and everything. One of these days, I'm sure I'll get there. Ten four. So, uh, what else do you have in mind? Do you think you'd do to it? As funny as it might be, especially being down here, um, air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, you're up there from PA way, you know. I guess uh, this Florida heat uh, isn't too much uh, to be uh, desired, huh? I don't mind it, you know, to put the windows down and sleep at the windows down or drive at the wing windows open, but yeah, I'd, yeah I'd, I'd like to have a little bit of AC. A lot of the old trucks I drove didn't have AC, so I, I guess I'm kind of used to it. So with that being said, what other trucks have you driven? And, and before you even answer that, you know, how long have you been trucking for? I started driving in August of 1996. What was the first truck that you drove on the road and some of the other trucks that you had driven? Well, I started off driving a, a 93 cab over International uh, with Builders Transport. That's what I started driving for. My dad said if I was going to do it, 
I had to do it on my own. He was going to teach me. It went out kind of like from there under the assumption that he would help me along the ways, but he said, uh, son, if you're going to do it, you're on your own. you gotta, you know, you got to learn it the hard way. And sure enough, I did. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's what I started off on. Uh, a newer international, of course. Uh, and then I started driving an old 86 cattle for international out of a company out of Missouri. Uh, but the last truck I, I owned, I had, was a 1979 A-Model Kenworth. And um, it was a blessing the day I got rid of the truck. Um, it was, you know, like I came out of it thinking, you know, I'm going to be an owner operator, it's going to be all peaches and cream, and I, yeah, I, I unfortunately overthought that, so, um, I almost bit off my own foot. Well, uh, if you care to elaborate, you know, what happened there? Well, I got the truck, uh, we had it stretched, and it was, it wasn't done right. Um, every time I turned around, it, it was, uh, this was breaking, that was breaking. I had a major electrical issue. Um, we rewired it. Uh, me and the old lady back at home, we rewired it by ourselves from front all the way to the back. Uh, and it was, you know, it was an unfortunate thing, but financially, um, with all due respect, I just, I couldn't do it anymore. Uh, the truck did more sitting than it did driving. Uh, and, you know, having respect for old iron like that, I, I gave it to somebody, let it go to somebody that had the money that I can put in the way and fix it the way it should have been fixed. And, you know, that's where it went. Uh, she's living up in Minnesota now. I hear you. I'm glad that that worked out to your favor. Because yeah, I wouldn't have found this old, this old girl here, so, I mean, well, here we are. Yeah, you know, uh, that's a silver lining. After uh, driving some other trucks, uh, why'd you settle on a cab over? you know, as your preference uh, of truck to, to own right now and uh, make money with? I, I like working on them. Uh, I know my way around it pretty good. Uh, decent enough to get me down the road, and if something happens to them, I can at least get it safely somewhere where mechanically, if I really need somebody to work on it, I can. Uh, but, you know, she's easy to get around. Uh, some of these places aren't designed for a lot of trucks, but um, you know, I, uh, I like this old girl. Uh, if I had to be honest with you, the, you know, my ultimate dream truck would probably be one of those big houses on wheels. Um, it'd be nice to have a little bit more room. Uh, but, you know, like I said, I make buy with what I got, and, you know, I'm, I'm happy and thankful that I got what I got. Uh, very thankful. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that love and would want, want one of these old cab -overs. Uh, you know, so with that being said, I'm very, I'm very blessed and thankful I had this. I don't think that I asked you, uh, you know, where do you go with the truck? You, you did say that you're going to go out west uh, with this next load here, but uh, what are you normally hauling with it, and where do you go with it? Anything and everything that'll go on a drive in. Um, I do have a refer that sits at home. It's not done yet. But anyway, um, I do. As far east coast as Pennsylvania, that's where I live. I don't care to go any further east than that. Um, but and as far as west as you know, California, uh, run the, run this old girl all over the place. Ten four. When I was checking the truck out before we left the chrome shop, I happened to look back there uh, at your your rear axles and everything, and you made mention of a an eight airbag uh, system. You know, tell me about that. So back in the early 80s, uh, Kenworth came out with the old uh, the eight bag air ride suspension. I got the first one of the bunch on this old truck. Uh, they call it the horseshoe in the back there, uh, right in the center in between the drive axles. Uh, it's an older style eight bag air ride. I like it. As you can see, she, she goes down the road pretty good. Handles the bumps pretty good, except for Pennsylvania. That's a whole other story. Chris, as we get ready to round the corner to go back in here to the, the chrome shop, hey, thanks for taking some time to, you know, get the old girl out here on the highway. Again, like I said, you know, 
anytime we see one of these old, older trucks, especially cap overs, uh, I always, I always break my neck trying to look at them. So I appreciate you, and uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Thank you, sir. I, I more than appreciate it. It was an honor meeting you.